that um, that we have as an organization. So uh, one of the threats we've had is we've gone from over 100 members to a very small group at this point. And that threat is really an external one. People aren't going to church the way they used to. How does that threat impact how we as an organization go forward? And all this ties back in ultimately to the principles and what we want. So do the new principles define what we're about? And what are we losing for the seven or eight we had? I'm not sure the eighth one was fully adopted, but it was proposed, and I read somewhere it was adopted, and I read somewhere it wasn't. Mm -hmm. And you have to check dates so closely on um, you do a website, and I don't have the attention to do that. So, going forward, the last time we did a forum, Bob Emberger proposed that we use the mic as a talking stick. Pass it around the circle, and each person can make a comment. If you don't want to make a comment, you say pass, and you pass it on. Will that work for people today to make comments on this? Or would you rather do it a different way? Because it's a democratic mm -hmm. society, so how do we want to do this? Talking stick, yes? Yeah. Sure. OK. So, Allison, are you willing to start this day? Yeah, we're just going to discuss this. Right, we are going to go up and back, and any other questions or anything you want to add to the question? Um, yeah, well, I think the principles of you, you are something that certainly drew me into this organization, and you went through them, and like, this, this is what I believe, this is what I believe. Looking at the new sheet, the white sheet, the six principles, it looks like they've broken into here's a principle and then here's a covenant or the um, behavioral commitments that we make to the principle. Here's what it looks like in behaviors, if I'm reading it right. Um, so it looks to me like everything's incorporated in either a principle or a covenant, which should be a behavioral commitment. So I'm wondering what's missing, what, what left us in this. Because these six look good to me.
and I agree <laughs> with you against for a lot of reasons. Um, number one being, these were good enough for me 30 years ago. <laughs> I don't see a reason to change. But it goes much deeper. And the, the art of the working has been wordsmithed to the nth degree in choosing exactly what words they want to convey what it is. So it's, I think it's a huge issue. Surprised me that I, I came down to very much liking the original principles. Um, these new ones to me fall more into the realm of um, a specific activism. And I think what we do here, we, there is a lot of activism um, and social justice that comes out of our group, but it, it comes out organically, not dictated. Um, you know, I was raised um, to think critically, uh, but very conservatively. 
Um, so I think up here, question all things. That was kind of what I started, you know, you could be any age, but if I'm a 19 year old going through WRF and I step into here, and I just haven't been exposed to a lot of these nuances, I don't think I'm gonna feel very welcoming here. If everyone's pushing me to challenge everything I thought, you know, I, I, I want that to happen um, in just a more, I don't know, welcoming, generic um, feeling. I mean, I've certainly grown since I've come here. Um, and I think that's what we all want to do. Things are changing on that one. I think the council's going to change. I'm not sure how I feel about it yet because I think I'm still digesting it. Um, one thing I like about you, you is the fact that, and I think in both principles, what I come down to is the inherent dignity of every individual mm -hmm. and the openness and acceptance of everyone. And I'm a little analytical and I'm trying to compare and contrast between the old and the new. So I don't know where I'm at right now. I'm just digesting it. But if they take away the dignity and respect for everybody else, that would be an issue. Honestly, I don't know what really to say because there's so there's there's a lot. And for me personally, you know, um, and for us maybe. Um, you know, transforming from a more, you know, different religious background to you, you, and just exploring and knowing and getting comfortable and having all these questions swirl around. Um, man, I, I love the open discussion and being able to. So I'm so appreciative of that. Um, but yeah, I think. Um, Kate, I think you said it well. These are supposed to be things that. We all have the basic tenets of, but it hasn't been there necessarily in my experience. So um, previously, previously, yeah, yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I just I'm really appreciative of this conversation. I have a number of things. I also like the original seven principles better than the one. Some of what the new principles do is, I think, uh, a good idea. Um, I want to share a, uh, a, a hypothesis, I guess, as to like the my guess as to why what's the motivation behind these principles? Because I've spent um, I've spent a lot of time talking with and engaged with people in like who are very uh, very active in like anti-racism. Um, I, I did a did a great um, seminar, uh, long several week long seminar um, back in Michigan about um, anti-racism. I was approaching it at the time from the perspective of my my work um, in, in community college, but uh, but I learned a lot from that. And uh, one of the things. That, well, and I guess I just want to preface by saying it seems to me that the UUA is is kind of doubling down on its anti-racist work, right? And like racial justice, environmental justice, a lot of these kind of kind of things. And in all of these in all of these efforts, um, intentionality is really important because if we simply if we simply state our goals and state the way we believe the world should be, which is sort of what the original seven principles do, then that doesn't really provide enough pressure to make meaningful change. And that's been borne out by history. Um, I think for a long time now, America, a lot of Americans have 
been vocal about their ideals, but without, but there's not enough pressure, but that, but that alone doesn't exert enough pressure to actually change the world, or change the status of, of racial um, inequity in, in America. So, as an example, um, one popular perspective is the colorblind um, philosophy. Uh, you all heard of that? This idea that like we treat everyone equally. It's, it's holding, the idea of holding up equality, right? Saying we treat everybody equally regardless of the race, creed, um, ethnicity, right? It's like, it doesn't matter the color of your skin, I'm gonna treat you equally, right? That's not effective. It's not effective um, because it's not it's not intentionally fighting racism. <laughs> you know, it's not like doing anything intentionally. Um, a, a good analogy I, I've heard is the idea of being we're all in a river and the river flows towards inequity because of our history, because of the society we live in, because of our culture. And if you just uphold equality and say, I'm gonna be colorblind, I'm not racist, you know, then it's like you're treading water in the river and the current is pushing you downstream towards inequity. The only way to make progress is to swim against the current. And so what I'm seeing in the new principles is, that is actually I'm seeing an effort to be, to just be more intentional in working towards justice and equity. Um, that's what I, especially with these covenants that are, that are, that are written here. Um, so that's my guess here, is that like, this is an effort to, to, to like inject more intentional anti-racist work into, into the UU uh, associations. Um, yeah, uh, to, you know, an effort to encourage people to swim upstream. That's how I'm seeing this. Now, I don't love them. I like I do. I, if we're gonna stand in a circle and hold hands and read them out loud, I don't want to read these ones just because they're really long. <laughs> 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 Which is why I say, uh, you know, I want something in between. Like I like the idea of trying to promote more intentional, more like like effort, you know, mm -hmm. towards um, mm -hmm. towards justice and equity. But you know, I think something in the middle would be more and easier to embrace and something that would feel beautiful and elegant. I think there's a lot of value in that to people, right? Yeah. And that's all I can say. Kristen said everything I was going to say. Well said. I too was thinking about uh, the intention behind this. Uh, it feels to me, without a lot of knowledge of this, it feels to me um, that we've held these great virtues or beliefs, and the world hasn't seemed to get any better, so we're rewriting them, and we've been doubling down, just trying to create, because there's a lot about renewing the covenant in there, so renewing commitment and committing mm -hmm. to action. And I'm okay with the old ones. Um, kind of the, if it's not broke, don't fix it. But I also say that knowing that out here as a rural community, we have a lot of different issues than some of our brothers and sisters. Um, without saying anything, yeah, I'm comfortable with the old ones. I'll leave it at that. I'm glad I came to last year. Uh, I'm an old, uh, old guy now, so I'm resistant to change, so I'm skeptical about that resistance to change. So, you know, why not change? Um, I'll say one positive thing about the new uh, uh, inherent worth and dignity. I always have a little problem with that. I like the new, uh, we declare that every person has the right to flourish with inherent dignity and worthiness. Mm -hmm. um, there have been some evil characters in the history of this world 
that I have my doubts out there in their worthiness. Uh, I'd like I like to get the potentiality. I'm uh, regretting. Uh, <coughs> it, it is. It's been said before that the, the the real change here is in the covenants to be specific about intentional action and what was supposed to be a religion of action. Uh, again, I, I'm just sort of like on Rich's side. Uh, collective action for like you do is, is pretty hard because we all have our different ideas and that's supported. And the thing that I regret the most, I guess, is my favorite principle, the, the free and responsible search for truth and meaning, which is why I uh, cherish this organization, is subsumed in the pluralism of the second one under a covenant. And I think it needs to be out there. In fact, if you look at the covenant, it doesn't have much to say about uh, diversity in culture, experience, and theology. Um, and it's just me, but uh, sacred beings is something that I don't really feel in my heart. I know it's part of the American, uh, the Native American culture that everything is sacred. But uh, I think there's a little bit too much uh, God in that than for a potential atheist, if not complete atheist. I, I'm not sure about the sacredness of Worthiness, yes, sacred, uh, mm -hmm. implies something different to me. Uh, so my question to you, Paula, and when you uh, when you attend virtually, is how strong are the covenants going to be attached to the initial statements? Because it would be fine for me to say the initial statements if that was the, uh, the decision. The covenants, we each, each society, each country, has its own things that we want to emphasize. Right now, currently, it's to teach our children. And uh, uh, I, 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 I think what Tristan says uh, fully, uh, that there is a national movement uh, for the youth uh, to be anti-racist. But what we can do here locally is, is what our mission as stated could do. The other, last thing I'll say is that generosity is completely new. And I think it's a new way to say, look, we're in financial trouble. We need people to reach out and donate more money, more resources to our organization because we're still uh, cutting, cutting, cutting. Mm -hmm. Before, so I just wanted to make sure everyone's aware. There is a covenant that goes with equity, but it's on the back. Uh, so I've been, I've been looking at this for this whole time being like, why is there no covenant after equity? Uh, but it's on the equity. And it does specifically mention money. So uh, right. as someone involved with the finances of this organization, I'm, I'm sort of glad they said it, but yeah, I wish the money could always be in the background. But it doesn't solve our problems if it is. But we have a basket out there. We'll get to that. <laughs> okay. We're going to talk about the why. Why, why is this being proposed? Um, I'm looking at time. So my first question is, because several people said, this is all new to me. This was, I spent hours, and let me tell you, I'm not a bit as confused about this stuff as anybody in this room. Um, and the reason I schedule this, because I have to vote on this in June. This is a democratic organization. I need to represent what we want. It doesn't matter what I want. It matters what we as a group want. So it's really important to get this feedback. Um, the back page, is what, yeah, that's the equity part, yeah. Okay, um, so first question is, we have 
another form in May. Shall we hear this topic again in May and make it go deeper? Show of hands for yes. Okay. Then this, this will be the topic for our May, May forum, and we will go deeper. I don't have to vote until whatever time we do. So we have time to figure this out. I think there was a lot of response today. What I heard was majority of people like the old better than the new. When we vote, we vote yes or no on it. We have the option of trying to amend it, but honestly, what you have to do to get an amendment on the floor requires the approval of, I forget how many congregations, like 20, 25. There is no way I can make that happen. So I don't see us having an option to have an amendment on the floor. But the more I know about what you want, the better I can look at amendments that might be offered and consider them. Because I'm not going to be able to pull you all at the time, probably. The, one more thing that I'm going to do again. The other thing I will do is I get more information about how this will be presented. I will be sharing it through the Dragonfly and trying to get it on the website and that kind of thing so I can keep people as informed as possible. But no, I'm a highly disorganized person, so I do my best and it isn't always what it could be. So uh, regarding amendments, again, I did some homework yesterday. This is many years happening, and I saw something about it the last GA General Assembly. There were 50 some amendments proposed for changes into this, and they looked at only five or something, and only two of those were adopted. So it's not like this time we could make an amendment to change language and anything that happened. Right. It's a very hard thing to do, I think, going right. forward. I think they're ready to say yes or no, yes or no on it. But mm -hmm. do you remember, Ann, to pass it in the two-thirds or three-quarters? Oh, I don't know. know that. I will look it up again. But uh, it, uh, I thought it says two one-thirds. Two-thirds. Don says two-thirds. So if, oh. if one-third of the congregations represented oh, yes. plus one yes. vote against it, it's down. And that's a fair amount of power. I mean, to mm -hmm. require two thirds pass. So, so there is that part of it. Yeah. Any other? I'm still wondering, um, wondering what is the impetus? Because I agree with what Don said. Uh, the reason I left the Catholicism and joined this was the Korean Responsible Search to join an organization that encouraged me to think mm -hmm. instead of telling me what to do for me mm -hmm. um, was why I'm here. Mm -hmm. And so I'm curious if that's buried in, in, in pluralism, mm -hmm. which is the most disturbing thing to me. And these, the, the originals are eloquent. And remember the Catholic Church when they switched to Bibles on us? <laughs> and the old Bible and the Latin, you know, it was also beautiful, beautifully, the noise, the sound was beautiful, and that was lost. Um, but, and so I'm wondering, what is the, the people who are promoting this, what's their why? What's their why? What's driving it? Is it that collective social action? Because I agree with what you're saying, Richard. Yeah, well, see, yeah, I realize that you, I realize you agree with you. Linda, as you, as you saw that. I've been to different unitarians around the country, and I see variations, we're all variations in the theme. And then I went to one in Rio, which was the biggest and so they had, I was in my daughter's, both of different types of activists. One of them had already been working with them. And this group is big enough, it has subgroups. Everybody's not there. There's a subgroup that can help you with your alcohol. There's a subgroup if you want to work on racism. And there's sub so when there was a uh, meditation, and we go meditations, letting go, and bring your mind. This meditation was put your foot out there and change the world. Mm -hmm. It was, it, they were activists. These were activists. My daughters were activists. Mm -hmm. We were activists. But the old ones allow us to be 
serving the people who need it here locally, maybe in the room, or outside of it, or changing the world. And we all, as I've been to it, we can change this. We're all figuring a bit guilty that we're not changing the world, but we also don't see a real easy way. Um, so anyway, uh, I, it's, it seems like that's the impetus, the people who want to change the world, it, which is great. Yeah, I think what you're saying is the old principles allow for either no, or both. Right. Where, where right. Both, are, both are welcome, but it's not demanding the one. Right. Mm -hmm. Any other final comments? So we will, the June forum, the May forum will be about this again. And we will try to get more information leaving me and the mouse in my pocket out before that.